I can. Yeah. So it's a pleasure to have uh, Jerome Duncan, Duncan with Perfect. us from University of Namur in Belgium. Yes. And uh, it will be, it, we had two great lectures. Everyone said it was wonderful. So I'm sure this third lecture will be as good. So please, Jerome. All right, thank you. So good, uh, not good evening, good day, I guess, everyone. Um, thanks for having me again. Uh, so as Stefanella say, today is lecture three. You should be able to see my screen. If it's not the case, just let me know. And lecture three will be mostly uh, mostly on uh, Lyapunov exponents. I mean, an introduction, let's say, to Lyapunov exponents. Uh, Duke, uh, let me try this. Right. I'm a bit rusty with the uh, Wacom tablet. Uh, all right. Uh, so last time I have introduced um, as a kind of, of uh, recap, um, I have introduced, we, we have introduced the concept of um, variational dynamics, concept of variational dynamics where we basically assign a dynamics to the so-called tangent vector that are usually denoted by v or w depends but usually deviation vector is v or w and in the uh, discrete discrete case as uh, the variational dynamics is defined like this. So you have uh, mapping xn plus one is equal to psi of x at time n psi uh, goes from, let's say, d to d, where d is the domain of r to the power n. Well, it's a silly notation, mk, let's say. And the variational dynamics. Um, consists of the state equation and the, um, the tangent dynamics given by V or W at time N plus one is nothing else than deep psi X N acting on uh, the tangent vector at time N. Okay, and we had introduced a similar definition for the continuous case. Um, so in the continuous case, you start with a vector field given by, let's say, uh, x dot is equal to, uh, last time I believe I denoted it by capital X, so let's say f of x. Again, x is in D included in some R to the power N. And the variational equations is the state equation plus the dynamics of the tangent vector, which is the Jacobian field evaluated along the solution um, acting on the vector tangent vector W. All right, and um, and what? And I told you that each time you need to some mental things to to translate some concept from the discrete world to the continuous world, and uh, and and uh, and vice versa. So as for now, I will mostly focus on the uh, continuous case, even though are very similar in the discrete world. Uh, and I have now all the material ready to introduce the Lyapunov exponents. So what are Lyapunov exponents? They are useful quantities to, um, let's say, quantify the asymptotic growth of the tangent, tangent vector, sorry. 
So Lyapunov uh, definition. So uh, the characteristic characteristic Lyapunov exponent. I will just write Lyap exp or Lyapunov exp. Yeah. For the shortcut, the characteristic Lyapunov exponent uh, in the direction in the direction of um, W0, a given initial tangent vector, uh, provided, so you need two things to compute it. You need one initial tangent vector and one initial state as to, let's say, initialize this dynamical system here. So the characteristic Lyapunov exponent is the direction of, of W0 provided X0 uh, is defined is defined as uh, chi of X0 V0 is equal to, how do you pronounce this? Is this chi, right? Is that correct? Um, it's X or is something else? I know uh, it's a, uh, I mean, kind of, I mean, the Greek letter for capital X. Well, whatever. It should be maybe. Chi. Yes. Anyway, I will say Chi. So this is Chi. So each time you hear Chi, think about capital X. So this is given by the limb soup when. T, the time T goes to plus infinity. In the discrete case, you need to switch T to, you need to replace T by N, but I mean, you can adjust the notations. I is given by the limb soup of one of T log of the norm of W. Okay, so in fact, these quantities here, even if you do not see it, depends on both X0 and W0, as the trajectory itself depends, of course, of the initial seed X0, and so does the uh, variational dynamics where it depends on the trajectory, the solution, and the initial tangent vector. So this is the- You're taking W0 normal one at the initial condition, is normalized to one, W0? Uh, you can, yeah, you, yeah, okay. Or otherwise you need here, yeah, okay, thanks. So two, two options, either you normalize W, so I will now take, in fact, W0 equal to one. If not here, you need to divide by the norm of W0, right? Are we on the same page, Stefanella? Yes. Okay, so what I do now, thank you, is I, I always assume, and as I always assume that the norm of W0 is one. And in fact, we will even see later on that that um, the Lyapunov, I mean, you can show from these definitions that the Lyapunov exponent depends only of the direction of W0 and not and not its norm, right? So that's why we are able to, to do this normalization. Uh, all right, so take this as a definition. Now uh, we will, let's say, draw a few, uh, a few facts about Lyapunov exponents. So suppose, suppose that W0 grows um, exponentially fast this time. So imagine you have this slow for the time evolution of the tangent vector. Uh, Then uh, if you plug this law into this definition, you immediately see that P of uh, X0, W0 will be 
lean soup when t is equals to infinity, one over t log of exponential lambda t log of energy zero, uh, which is equal to, can someone tell me what's the value of this quantity? Lambda. lambda lambda yeah correct that's lambda yeah i'm trying to make it a bit interactive because it's a it's a weird feeling to to do it remotely lambda thank you so if you have this exponential law the lyapunov exponent will be nothing else than the uh, the rate of this asymptotic law now imagine uh, this was the case i now suppose that for some reasons uh, the um, time evolution of the tangent vector scales let's say linearly with time so I write this as a plus b of t a and b are some constant constant values Then, then what? Then can you tell me what will be in that case? So Lyapunov exponent. So try to do the math quicker than my writing. So I write it, it's one of T log of A plus B T, which is equal to, to zero, right? So, so that's, let's say why we usually, uh, we interpret chi as the time average. Well, you see here that chi as defined here is, is, is a time average of something. It's one over T, blah, blah, blah. So chi is a time average um, of the exponential growth of the tangent vector, of the tangent can I, can I make a comment? Yes, yeah, sure, please. So, uh, in one of the study of vortices uh, and passing stranger in the dynamic of vortices with the chaotic behavior, actually, you observe a by a two different kind of behavior. You observe that sometimes was exponential and sometimes was almost regular. Mm -hmm. So actually what to make more sense in that sense was not these limits, but was the curve itself, it was the, the graph of the curve they show to, you know, from time to time, two different slopes. Sure. That, that was, uh, that was, uh, okay, finish my comment. Thank you. So yeah, guys, if you have any comments, don't hesitate to interrupt, right? Uh, so thank you, can I go in? yeah sure uh, so now i will do a few a few remarks i will try to keep the slides clean remark one uh, as you see kai is uh, is an asymptotic time quantity uh, and obviously it's not clear for example that that the solution exists for all time t right so of course i'm not writing 
it here, but here we implicitly assume that what we compute does make sense. So the question is, does the solution xt x not always exist for t positive? Well, the, we, 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 we do the assumption that allows us to do that. So of course we have some assumptions behind some assumptions yeah um, and, and in application actually uh, you have things you have structure that uh, exist only for finite time so actually there is the equivalent of finite time level of exponents yeah and that's what we will discuss uh, in the later in the following in ah, fact. Okay. Sure. So, I mean, let's say in practice or uh, numerically speaking, what you do is you, or I mean, when you compute, by the way, I'm not going to, yeah, thanks for the remark. Um, a few things I should do here. I started by talking about the discrete keys and the continuous case, not that I will not talk about Lyapunov exponents associated to time series. So I mean, here I somehow exclude all the data world, right? Um, that's remark number one. And remark number two, as Stefanella just said, uh, let's say in practice or when we deal with numerical computation, uh, well, we have to make the computation finite, finite in time. And so we compute finite time pool of exponents. But um, uh, yeah, no, I was more uh, referring to actually uh, geophysical uh, uh sure. yeah. so, Event. yes 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 so we will in fact compute finite time lapun of exponents uh, as I, we will comment on this later sure uh yeah so second can i go ahead remark number two remark number two uh This linear growth that you see here is kind of is sorry is characteristic of integrable system. Oops. So the linear growth of W T is characteristic of integrable systems. So here I will not really define by what I'm, I mean, in which sense uh, I want my systems to be integrable, but um, just let me give you uh, one example. Um, so imagine I have uh, an Hamiltonian function H, uh, which written in some action angles coordinate. Um, depends only on the action I. So imagine I have this situation, uh, then, then what? Uh, then you can derive both, of course, the um, equation of motions and the variational dynamics that I will write here, oh, theta dot, sorry. Oops. Theta dot is equal to uh, the derivative of H of I. Um, and that's usually a frequency vector we denote by omega of I. something called frequency vector. So this is a parenthesis just to illustrate what, what I mean here by, by linear growth and integrable system. So you have this, uh, I will um, write down the variational equations as well. Um, so if I denote by, 
Wi, W theta, the coordinates of the tangent vectors. Um, you can check that this is equal to zero and W dot of theta will be the H, um, the, the partial with respect to I of the frequency vector. Uh, well, I will keep it like this. Times omega I acting on W I. And by the way, this can be an exercise as well. Easy exercise. Check that this is true. Um, from that, you get that the dynamics, oh, sorry, oops, the dynamics here is trivial to integrate. You get that um, W I of T is constant and is equal to the initial condition. Uh, and what do you get here? Something very similar, you get that W theta T is equal to uh, the partial. By the way, the action is constant over time as well. So this is I zero, W I zero, T plus W theta at time zero. Again, it's quite easy. And uh, if you are not convinced, well, you can convince yourself that this is true. And then, um, any remark question? Then from that, you get that W of T. So to save time, I will denote this quantity by mu of I zero and W I zero. So you get that um, the norm of the tangent vector will be square root of W I zero square plus mu I zero W I zero T plus W theta zero square. And this is equivalent asymptotically with the time t to the uh, following estimate, which is uh, t mu t times mu. Right, and thus, what do you get? Well, from the previous Mm, previous claim we made here, you immediately get that chi of x zero w zero is equal to to zero, right? So we started with an integrable Hamiltonian system, and we we got um, the Apunov exponents equal to zero. Good. Uh, one additional remark. Uh, so you have, uh, if if you are inter, I mean, for today's lecture, I I don't need uh, a lot of properties uh, related to the Apunov exponents. Uh, but if you are interested in, in some uh, some results regarding the pool of exponents, uh, you can you can read um, James Smith uh, James Smith's book. I forgot the name. Uh, uh, it's a classical book. Uh, I forgot the name. Uh, I believe it's uh, an introduction to, no, or differential dynamical system, I believe. Differential dynamical system. 
Oh, you can check also Wiggins book. And I already gave the exact reference um, during the first lecture. So applied, uh, applied dynamical system. Uh, for example, here you will find, as Stefanella said, that chi depends only on the direction. You can prove it of W0 and not on the norm of W0, right? Or you can find that, for example, chi does not depend on the norm you, you select to work with, does not depend on the norm, on the norm selected, etc. So you have a few, a few properties about uh, of exponents, but I, I shall not delve too much into the details for today's need. Uh, one final remark, remark number four. Remark number four. Uh, so if I drop, in the definition of the Lyapunov exponents, the limb soup here, I have to, uh, let's say, I face the problem of the convergence of, uh, of the limit when t is goes to plus infinity of one of t log of w of t. And uh, well, it goes a bit beyond um, those introdu introductory lectures, but, but basically um, all of this problem of, of discussing the convergence of the Lyapunov exponent are somehow related to, to uh, to a quite well-known theorem, which is uh, referred as uh, Oseledek theorem. Oseledek theorem. And as Stefanella said, and I will comment uh, further and later on this point, let's say in practice slash numerical setting. Now we deal with finite, uh, with finite, finite, finite quantities. So T goes to, uh, let's say capital T, where t is a, a large but finite time, right? Where t is, let's say, large, large enough. Uh, and we will comment further on that as well. All right, so now we will do some exercise in order to compute Lyapunov exponents on some simple case, as this is the best way to understand what they are. So, exercise slash application. So let us try to compute Lyapunov exponents in some easy cases. And then leveraging on this example, I will enumerate a few general facts about Lyapunov exponents. But as for now, I assume that I'm dealing as usual with a linear system. That's a kind of system we like to start with. So I have X dot, which is equal to capital A, that's a matrix, time X. Uh, a is a, let's say, N-dimensional uh, square matrix. And I assume that A has N distinct eigenvalues. 
that I denote lambda one, lambda two, blah, 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 lambda n. And I also assume actually that lambda one is larger than lambda two, larger than lambda three, da, 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 larger than lambda n. And to each, I mean, each eigenvalue come with an eigenvector that I denote U1, U2, blah, 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 U3. So this is the uh, dynamical setup. Uh, and because the uh, state equation is linear, uh, you derive immediately the variational equation. Uh, v dot is the same, actually. And due to the linearity, you can, you can convince yourself that V dot is equal to AV, or let's say W, to be consistent with the notation I used before, W dot is equal to AW. All right, so we assume we have this, um, this dynamical system, this variational equation. Now take as an initial tangent vector, take as W zero, one of the, uh, one of the eigenvector. So let's say that I select W0 as one of the eigenvector UI. Y between one and N, okay? Hello, hello. Oh, sorry, sorry, I believe the last one should be a UN, right? Like U1, U3, U2, oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 sure, 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 UN, sorry. That's yeah. fine. Yes. So I select one of these UI um, due to the linearity of the um, tangent vector equation, you get immediately that W, uh, so you can express, let's say, immediately the, the shape of the solution. So W of T is equal to exponential lambda i, so which is the eigenvalue associated to the eigenvector I chose, t times uh, ui. Okay, do you agree with that? So that's a consequence of the yeah. linearity, consequence of linearity. But I, I always uh, hesitate between the level of details I should provide or not, so anyway. Um, so that's a trivial fact. Uh, and from that, what do you get? I claim that chi of x0, w0, will be equal to lambda i. Okay, so morality, I have N distinct Yapunov exponents, sorry, exponents. I, obta I have, I obtain N distinct Yapunov exponents by changing W0. Do you agree? If I take W0 is equal to U1, I will obtain lambda one. If I take W0 equal to U2, I will obtain lambda two. If I take W0 equal to U3, I will obtain lambda three, etc. So I have at most N distinct Lyapunov exponents. Now I will take, so this was under the assumption that W0 was, was equal to a specific eigenvector. Now, what do I get for general? For a general W0, so what's the generic case? General, general, let's say generic case. Generic case. So I select W zero uh, arbitrary, but I write it as a linear combination of the basis given by the eigenvector, right? 
So I know that W0 is equal to a linear combination of this kind, right? So now I claim and uh, this is somehow a kind of exercise as well for you which is not too tough and very similar to the kind of computation we made before, I claim that chi of, of x0 and the initial tangent vector given zero will be equal to lambda, which is the maximum of the lambda i, uh, where the maximum is taken over the uh, all the eigenvalues for which the corresponding coefficient is not equal to zero. Okay. So in the linear case, Lyapunov exponents. Are nothing else than the eigenvalues, linear case. Yapunov exponents are related, let's say, to, to the eigenvalues, so to the uh, spectral properties. Of, of the matrix A and And I will I will uh, explain what I mean by almost surely. Almost surely, chi goes to lambda one, which is the maximum of the eigen uh, value. Sorry, sorry. Uh, go to lambda which is defined as the maximum of the eigenvalues. So what do I mean by almost surely? Um, well, I mean, so you see, uh, I mean, almost surely, if I take in this sum, C1 equal, if C1 is not equal to zero, then these quantities will go to lambda one. If this quantity, if C1 is equal to zero, then almost, I mean, I will converge towards lambda two, which is the second largest um, eigenvectors, eigenvalues, sorry, et cetera. So you can sketch you can sketch, uh, let's say, um, the situation, for example, uh, to make it easier in R3. So the thing is this. So imagine I am in R3 uh, and I take um, W0 in R3. And I search that C1 is not equal to zero. Then, sorry, I need a new page, page, page. Then if you are in this case, Then chi of k0 w0 goes to uh, lambda one. Now you will converge towards lambda one only if you are not in a two dimensional hyperplane. So I will try to do it right. U2, U3. And now 
I select, let's say, the hyperplane. Uh, well, maybe it's a, well, yeah, it's a bit confusing. Uh, let's say I will go towards, uh, yeah, this is a bit confusing now. So what I want to say is that if C1, if C1 is equal to zero, then W0, yeah, that's the point. Then W0 um, belongs to an hyperplane of dimension two, and which is the space, uh, which is a space span of U1, uh, sorry, U2, U3, right? So, so in that case, W0, if C1 is equal to zero, will be in that hyperplane. And if, if W0 is in this hyperplane, uh, let's say D, W0 in D, then chi of X0, W0, will converge towards uh, lambda two. And then imagine for some reason that both C1, that's the last situation, I will write in light blue. Now imagine that C1 is equal to zero, C2 is equal to zero. What does it mean? It means that W0, um belongs to let's say domain two and domain two is a line i hope you agree with that um i will sketch it here so in that case w0 belongs to a specific specific uh, line in R3, this is D2. And in that case, W0, uh, sorry, chi of double X0, W0 converge towards lambda three. So what do I mean by almost surely? I mean almost surely in the sense of a measure theory, because let's say the measure of a line uh, in this hyperplane is zero, and the measure of this two-dimensional hyperplane in R3 is equal to zero, right? So for generic ve tangent vector, you go to the largest one. Only if you do not belong to a two-dimensional hyperplane, which is given, let's say, by C1 is equal to zero, in that case, you go to lambda two, uh, and you will go to lambda two only if in that hyperplane, you do not belong to a specific direction. So this is a general fact. Uh, so uh, that I will describe now. So like almost surely, I mean, is that clear for everyone? Because it's a bit tricky to explain, maybe in live. But do, do you do you get the message here? Yes. No. You want me to repeat, or yes, yes, of course. So, of course, you want me to repeat, or you get it? No, no, it's, it's very clear. Okay, great. So, almost surely, Kai converges towards the largest eigenvalue. Uh, and and uh, this largest eigenvalue uh, will have a name. Uh, this is a maximal Lyapunov exponent. So we have a spectrum of exponents as we have seen here. We have at most n values. So the largest one will be the maximal Lyapunov exponent. 
Uh, and this, this uh, so here we somehow made those observation based on a, a very simple but, but uh, instructive dynamical system given by a, a, a linear um, matrix equation. But the observation I just we just made here are in fact uh, general. So that will be the message given by the following propositions. So the following proposition will present general facts about the of exponents. So the first one is this. So the spectrum of the Lyapunov exponents for initial tangent vector, oh, sorry, W, W in R to the power N and W not equal to zero. So this, this set uh, takes at most N, which is the dimension of that guy. values. This is a general fact. So there's a discrete, the discrete um, aspect of the Lyapunov spectrum is a general fact. So it's, a, it's not because we started with a linear system. Uh, and so I will not prove, I will not prove this. Um, and I will not prove neither the, um, the following um, proposition that I have tried to, to exemplify for the case R, uh, to, for the case N equal to three. So this is the abstract version of what I have tried to explain. So if I denote, if I denote Li, the set of the vector W R N, such that uh, such that chi of w is smaller than lambda i, then then we have uh, a filtration. Um, maybe I shall say nested subspaces. Then we have um, the following. Nested subspaces. You have that zero will be equal to one of the uh, Ls plus one, which is included into Ls, included into uh, a larger subspace, which is L1, which is R to the power of N. And each of the next one is different from the previous one. And what, what is the message of the proposition? If we have this chi of, of an initial tangent vector W is equal to um, lambda i, if and only if, W is in Li, um, how do you say this? Li minus Li plus one. So you subtract well, Li the subspace um, Li plus one. And again, here I can, I can reduce the sketch. I explained, so I have L1 will be L3. This is L1, L3. In this space, I have L2, which was an hyperplane of dimension two. So this is L2. And in this, I have uh, L3, which was a line. So here I have L1. In L1, L, I have L2, and in L2, I got L3. 
right? And we have seen that, I mean, you go to, um, for example, lambda two, if you are in L2, so the, the, the two-dimensional plane minus uh, the line, because if you are on the line, you go to lambda three, etc. okay? So that's the meaning of this uh, general fact. All right, so I hope we are still on the same page. Uh, now, why Lyapunov exponents are, are useful? Uh, for chaos detection. <laughs> because usually, I mean, uh, as I say during the second lecture or the first lecture, we remember to be chaotic in the sense of the Vane, we, we, we need to fulfill three conditions, but usually one only check the sensitivity to the initial conditions. So, if lambda, which is a, a maximum of all the values along my chi, and v0 not equal to zero. So I denote, so this is a maximal characteristic pool of exponent. Um, so if, if lambda is positive, in I mean, in application, we say that we have chaos chaos or chaotic orbit. And if lambda converges towards zero, then the orbit is called regular. So we have, you have a classification of the regularity of the orbit as a function of the value taken by the Lyapunov exponents which is prob probably in this sense, the oldest diagnostic uh, for chaos detection. So we have this, um, and let me also, also introduce the concept of Yapun of time. So you, you should maybe uh, read this, so, what, what is the Lyapunov of time? So if lambda is greater than zero, the Lyapunov of time tau of L is defined as the inverse, as the inverse, sorry, of the uh, Lyapunov of exponent, the maximum Lyapunov of character exponent. And so this is a time uh and th this is the 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 <clears throat> let's say the the characteristic uh, time scale of instability so in the linear case the lyapun of time will be the um, I'm losing my words. Uh, in the linear case, the Lyapunov of time will be the, um, the E folding time, as they call it uh, in, in physics. So what do I mean by the characteristic time scale of instability? Uh, after one, after one to L, uh, the norm of the tangent vector has grown by a factor E. After 10 Lyapunov times, this has grown by a factor uh, uh, which goes to the power of three, so more than 20,000 times. All right. Uh, so, how, how much time I still have, Stefanella? Ten minutes. A few minutes. Ten minutes. Yes. Ten minutes. Okay. Great. So, remark. 
as we said earlier, in general, we estimate those guys or so Lyapunov exponents. In general, we estimate Lyapunov exponents numerically. And thus, in finite time. So it means that we, we compute, we compute one over, uh, compute, sorry, the limit when t is goes to capital T of one over T log of the norm of WT for T, which is a large but finite time. So how do you choose capital T in practice? Usually you need to calibrate a bit the numbers by doing a few numerical simulation. All right, uh, so I guess I still have, let's say seven to eight minutes. And I would like to um, maybe talk about uh, numerical aspects for computing Lyapunov exponents. And next time I will um, explain how we can, let's say portray phase spacing using Lyapunov exponents and non-variational non methods. So as for today, I would like to present you um, the numerical aspect, which is useful in practice, if you need to estimate those guys. Um, so what is this numerical aspect I would like to, to describe? Um, this is a, the, the renormalization procedure, the renormalization procedure. And this is actually linked to Stefanella's comment at the beginning of the lecture, which is that Lyapunov exponents do not depend on the norm, but only on the direction of the tangent vector. And why this is useful in practice? Uh, it's useful because in chaotic orbits, diverge exponentially fast. Chaotic orbits, I mean, orbits with closed initial conditions that are chaotic diverge exponentially fast with time. And due to this exponential, exponentially fast divergence, when you implement this formula here with your laptop, you might have some overflow. So here you face a problem of overflow because I mean, the norm of the tangent vector here grows very quickly. In fact, exponentially fast. So how, how, what do we do in practice? We, we normalize the dynamics and this sketch is rather classical, so I will try to reproduce a nice uh, picture I have here. So you, you start with an initial seed, x0, and you have close to it x0 plus w0. You have, let's say, orbit number one. And when you start with a, a close initial trajectory, you have orbit number two. This is, this is. so after a time tau, this displacement is very large. So at time tau, imagine that this quantity is super large. So this is uh, x tau plus w tau. So what do you do is that you renormalize 
the deviation vector by introducing y tilde of tau, where the norm of y tilde of tau is equal to one, and you repropagate the dynamics uh, by restarting, let's say, the numerical estimation of the Lyapunov exponent with this new initial tangent vector. And then again, after, let's say, a specific period of time tau that I assume to be regular, this quantity is, is very large. So what do you do? You repeat the process. So you have y tau time tau t. What you do is that you renormalize the tangent vector such that the new tangent vector has norm one and you repeat. So I can give you the pseudo code of this procedure and then I will stop there. So pseudo code to estimate uh, lambda. Mm. By the way, you have you have more details. Uh, I mean, about this in the nice paper uh, of uh, Skokos Ari Skokos, two thousand ten. Um, I, I use this in my thesis in ninety six. <laughs> Ah, uh, so in, in 96? Yeah, in 96, I used this to compute the life of those Ah, yeah, you now. mean the, the renormalization process, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. so all of this is explained in, uh, I mean, you probably have other uh, inputs, but this is pretty nice. The, the, the paper is called the Lyapunov characteristic, characteristic exponent and their computation. So I encourage you to give it a read. And so the pseudocode, I extracted it from, from this paper. That's, I mean, really it's uh, basically what we do is just we, we let the dynamics evolve, we compute finite quantity, we renormalize, we save some increments and we repeat the process to, to avoid numerical overflows. So you start with x not w not. As Stefanella said at the very beginning, I select w zero. Uh, the norm of w zero is equal to one, and I select a renormalization. Renormalization time tau. So you start with this, and then what do you do? Do for i is equal to, to a large final time. You, let's say, if I speak as people in uh, geophysics, as it was mentioned by, by Stefanella, I advect the dynamics, or I integrate, or I iterate the dynamics, so what do I do? Uh, basically from xi minus one tau, wi minus one tau, I am able to compute x at time tau and w at time tau, right? Sorry, i tau. I compute from there alpha i, which will be the norm of w i tau. I renormalize, I renormalize this tangent vectors, tangent vectors, sorry, before it, it goes too large. So I renormalize w i tau. So I change w i tau. Uh, to w i tau over the norm of w i tau, okay? 
So in this sense, I, I avoid uh, large numbers. So this is nothing else and W and tau over F and I. And do. And then what do you have? You have uh, you 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 estimate compute compute estimate. Um, let's say sigma at time n, which is equal to this quantity one over n tau the sum for time one to n of the log of the uh, increment of the norm. And the claim is that this guy converge towards, sorry, converge towards chi when n goes to plus infinity. So that's why, uh, well, yes, converge to, I mean, asymptotically in time, this finite time quantity will converge to, to chi and the renormalization avoids the problem of overflows. All right, um, so I will stop here. Next time I will talk about phase space, visualization, sorry, compared towards lambda, the largest one. Yes, I will talk next time about phase space visualization using Lambda. And if I have time, because I am very slow, uh, I will talk as well about faster and the cow finite time. I will introduce faster finite time chaos indicator. So that's where we go next time. Uh, if you have any question, of course, I'm happy to, to answer you. And I am also happy to take any feedback you have um, on the lectures. So thank you, guys. Thank you very much. It was great. I, I will send you my paper. <laughs> I will send you the paper. I haven't seen the... Because we, uh, I was my PhD. Uh, in order to compute, I had to do that, as you say. Otherwise, will uh, explode. So exactly. Yes. This was uh, how I was doing exactly like you. You explode. <laughs> but I guess at that time, uh, uh, you know, we didn't publish the details of this. Okay. But right. Very very nice. Very clear. I'm I'm really looking forward instead to the new the fastest way because uh, to get um, so this. basically I will uh, yeah to the, to yes. the yeah yeah no this was great I'm saying I'm looking forward for the this other one because of that I haven't looked to. sure um, so I can give you a teaser about what I will describe. Uh, um, I will mainly talk about the well. Here what you have the FLI, which is a, which was a tool introduced by Claude Frechelet. And what is a, a FLI? That's nothing else than the Lyapunov exponents without, without this time average. Because what makes the Lyapunov exponent slow to converge is that you are, you still see my screen, right? Is that you, you, you do a time average of the norm of the tangent vector. Yeah. But actually, if you just a minute cancel this time average and just look at the log of the norm of the tangent vector, you already have enough information to yes. conclude. If this also, this is what I was saying is the log uh, that I, I would send in my paper. So the, <laughs> sure. so the, is the curve in case, yeah. the curve. It's not even with the limit, with the curve. But you mean the, the, the slope, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the, you, you detect different yeah. slope in the curve. Yeah, and we. Yeah. So what we do, we we did, we did the 
the distribution of finite time Lyapunov of exponents to the tag steps. Because yeah. if the distribution of finite time Lyapunov of exponents is a function of the finite time, then you will, might see one peak or two peaks if there are you know, some two different behaviors present. But, yeah. uh, yeah. but you know, it was a long time ago, so I'm sure there are some new ways, uh, some new. Yeah. So yeah, I will talk about, well, I can write it here because uh, maybe some students like to have a yeah, look yeah. before the next lecture, a uh, new page after. So teaser, teaser is one, the so-called FLI, which is fast, Yapunov indicator. And this is a wonderful tool introduced by Claude Freshley. 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 Fresh. Oh my God, sorry guys, I'm tired. Rush by Claude Freshley in the 97. And then, but I don't know if, if I will have enough time, but I would like to talk about finite time indicators, chaos indicators, for which you do not need to advect the tangent vector dynamics. So in fact, they are let's say, variational equation free. And those guys are based on geometrical properties uh, of orbits, such as their lengths or their amplitudes. So based on the length of orbit in the phase space or how much they stretch, you are able to construct a quite robust chaos indicator. And that's what we did. Uh, it's very recent and it's, it's, it's based on the so-called Lagrangian descriptor framework. So this was not new, but I mean, introducing a chaos indicator from the LDs, uh, that's what I did um, with my co-author in, uh, I mean, it was published last year and you can um, have a look. Uh, it was in Physica D uh, and yeah, you have any comment? No, it was just a noise uh, and the, the and the title, uh, I don't even remember, was probably, uh, was global dynamics, maybe global dynamics uh, using, I don't know, Lagrangian descriptor or something like this. I need to check, but I mean, well, that kind of time. So you can Google it. Uh, but I'm afraid I won't have enough time to talk about those geometrical indicators, but maybe, maybe it will be an opportunity to come to Brazil to talk about them. Who knows? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who knows? To, the, to the, give a full course if you want to go for a semester. <laughs> yeah. So, but for sure, next time I should be able to cover point one. Okay. Regarding point two, this is a bit unknown. We shall see. Okay, that's great, great, great. I, I, I will send you my article that uh, lets me stop. Uh,